time to throw it back to a couple of recipes I made before I started on my low carb journey. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, back to share another recipe video with you. And today I have two recipes that I prepared in my old kitchen all the way back in March. That was before I even started on my low carb journey. Like I said, I have tons of content in my computer that I haven't shared. And these are two recipes you guys had been asking for. So one of them is my homemade Alfredo and the other one is my Swedish meatballs. Now the Alfredo is definitely more of a keto style style pasta sauce and could be used for anybody and then my Swedish meatballs could easily be tweaked to fit any one of your dietary needs right now so I'm excited to share both of these recipes with you guys so let me take you back into my old kitchen where I'm sharing with you some Alfredo and some Swedish meatballs Feast your eyes on one of the easiest recipes you guys are going to see me share here on my channel because what you see is all that you need to make to make Alfredo. I do show a bag of rigatoni here and like I mentioned this video was filmed before we started doing more of a low carb diet so although I do may still do pasta for the kids or for Daryl I've actually been doing shrimp with broccoli and cauliflower. I'll link up above a what's for dinner video where I actually showed myself doing just that but all you guys are going to need for this recipe is one stick of salted butter one eight ounce package of cream cheese two cups of heavy whipping cream and one cup of some kind of parmesan cheese i'm using a grated parmesan and romano like a simple one that i picked up from a food lion that is literally it we're going to add a little salt pepper and garlic powder at the end but other than that you guys it is a super simple recipe so we're going to start out first by just getting the water on and our pasta boiling again you guys can use any kind of substitute our focus really is is on this really delicious Alfredo sauce. Once my water came to a boil, I gave it a really good salting. I don't know if you guys know that, but the key to really good flavorful pasta is giving a good salt to your water. So I got the pasta in starting to cook and then now we're gonna prepare the Alfredo. I'm actually using my copper pans, which I have linked in my Amazon store. And I actually have a review for these pans that I will link up above. It is gift giving season you guys and these are the best pans not sponsored just absolutely love them so we're gonna get that full stick of butter on a good halfway melt and then once it's started creating some kind of liquid in the pan we're gonna add in our cream cheese so three to five minutes until everything incorporates I know that looks kind of clumpy because it's just the fats in there right now we haven't added our liquid and then we're gonna add our parm cheese that's gonna help thicken it up just a little bit until Till we start incorporating like I said that liquid into it now so I put one cup of heavy whipping cream in first and just start to get everything to melt down and start to get gooey in that liquid and then once that's been dissolved like another two to three minutes I added that other cup of heavy whipping cream and gave it a good stir and then you still need a little bit of time for everything to just kind of work its way down so I showed you guys about medium low that you're gonna put it on for another like five minutes and then it'll get to that creamy consistency and once we reach that consistency now we're just going to throw in the end of our spices so a little bit of pepper I don't really measure I'm Italian so that's probably about half a teaspoon and I would say only a quarter teaspoon of salt the Parmesan cheese is very salty on its own so you don't want to over salt and then garlic powder so I'm big on the garlic I probably put in a full teaspoon I probably could have even done more more. But for measurement's sake, we'll just say a teaspoon of garlic, and then we're just going to mix that all together. And then that is it, you guys. It is done. The most simplest and most delicious Alfredo sauce you guys will ever taste. And now we'll take that deliciousness and we're going to pour it on our item of choice. So I have my nice flavorful and salted pasta and I'm pouring my Alfredo sauce on top. Again, like I said, I've been using veggies for myself and it has not allowed me to miss the pasta at all. The Alfredo sauce is so rich and so creamy that it just covers the veggies and me adding the shrimp 
shrimp inside. It's like my own version of shrimp Alfredo. It really is a truly delicious. So that is it for this recipe, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And now on to some Swedish meatballs. Okay guys, so now on to our next recipe. And like I said, we're making Swedish meatballs. This is another super simple recipe and you can cater this to any of your dietary needs as long as you just switch up the breadcrumbs. Everything else is low carb and keto approved. So here I have just about two pounds of ground beef. I have a little bit of 2% milk. I have two eggs. I have some breadcrumbs here and I have some Parmesan cheese and then I have a Lipton's onion soup mix and that is it so in lieu of those breadcrumbs I've actually used coconut flour which has worked you can use some pork rinds you can use a combination of both any kind of binding agent would work just fine so we're gonna take our ground beef we're gonna put it in the bowl we're gonna add our two eggs and then we're gonna add a cup and a half of that binding agent again whatever you're going to use whether it's the pork rinds the coconut flour or just plain old breadcrumbs crumbs and we're going to dump that into the bowl and now we're going to add the rest of our ingredients so in goes that full packet of the onion soup mix and then about a half a cup of the parm cheese and then now it's mixing time so when it's down and dirty you guys the rings are coming off so we're gonna wash our hands and we're gonna get ready to, like I said, get a little down and dirty. The best way to incorporate any kind of meatloaf or ground beef is to get down and mix it right with your hands. Lastly, we're gonna add in that splash of milk and you will see that I added just a tiny bit too much milk. I do go back and add a little bit more breadcrumbs later, but you just wanna do your best to incorporate everything all together. You want a nice consistency so that you can start rolling them. So like you can see, I felt like it was a little too wet. It wouldn't have stuck and held that well in a circle or you know meatball shaped form. So I just added just a little bit more breadcrumbs and then mixed and I could tell the difference in the texture and now you're just going to use some wax paper and align a cookie sheet and then we're going to begin to roll our meatballs so it's hard to kind of describe how much meat that i take i guess maybe in measurement form or weight form it's probably about two ounces but I take just a small handful with my fingertips and I roll it between the palm of my hands for about 10 to 15 seconds until I get a nice ball consistency and then I'm just gonna place that on the pan. Once our pans are full, I mean, look how many I got, you guys. 30 meatballs out of that two pounds of ground beef so that's a lot of Swedish meatballs and these are nice sizes so now we're going to take these pans and we're going to stick them in the oven a 350 degree oven for roughly about 20 minutes poof they are done and look at them you guys perfectly brown and they are perfect on the wax paper they never stick they come right off and once i was done with them i just threw them in the bowl and then i made some gravy on the side so nothing special i didn't use like broth or drippings or anything like that i just used a good old mccormick beef packet and i made some gravy on the stove while the meatballs were cooking you can do any kind of gravy that you like i usually add a little bit of that onion soup mix to the gravy as well just to kind of get that oniony flavor but then you're just going to pour it all over the meatballs and i feel like that also brings the meatballs back up to temperature like they're crisp casing keeps them warm on the inside but they get a little cool on the outside but once you add this really hot and steamy gravy it just kind of brings your meatballs back up to temperature and perfect for you to serve as a dinner so this particular night i serve this alongside of some white sticky rice i make the most perfect white sticky rice in my instant pot i swear it is better than any kind of chinese food takeout it is so so delicious and then i also made it with that rainbow cauliflower that i get from trader joe's it was a perfect compliment my mouth is actually salivating while i'm watching this because i don't eat food like that anymore it really does look delicious but this recipe is easy and like i said also caterable to any of your dietary needs. 
Okay guys, so that's it for this time's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I still have tons of throwback videos, so stay tuned. Got tons more coming your way. I love you guys all so much and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.